the Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning session for O-Level Geology with Sunday Desmond. I am your teacher for Geology from 5, Science. In the introduction of Form 5 Geology program, we shall examine the general presentation of the program, outcomes, competence to develop, and uh, previous knowledge. The Form 5 program is partitioned into three modules, which are, we have internal geodynamic, external geodynamic, environmental and economic and applied geology. In internal geodynamic, the model is divided into two topics, which are structural geology, where we shall be examining the structures, the geologic structures that are formed as a result of deformation. We also have tectonics, where we shall look at the different theories of tectonics, uh, plate tectonics, sea floor spreading, and isostasy. In environmental, economic, and applied geology, we have mineralogy, crystallography, metamorphic geology, and environmental geology. In the model external geodynamic, we have four topics, namely paleontology, stratigraphy, fieldwork studies, school-based practicals. The overall outcome of this program is to evaluate the ability of the learner to construct appropriate knowledge and reinvest this scientific knowledge and methods to seek solutions to real life situations in different contexts using the knowledge of geology. The competence to be developed in this aspect are in the field of societal and family life, the syllabus seeks to inculcate in the learner life skills. In the economic domain, it will enable the learner to transform and preserve natural resources. In the field of environmental education, the syllabus will enable the learner to reinvest the knowledge acquired in environmental conservation leading to the maintenance of the natural equilibrium and conservation, which are for the previous knowledge, for us to attain these objectives and competence, learners should have a good knowledge on, we have nature and processes of the earth, actual petrological processes, and activities, including the products formed as a result of these petrological processes. In Model 1, we have the following topics. Structural geology, which will be taught in 11 lessons. Tectonics, which will be taught in 20 lessons. In a model, environmental, economic, and applied geology, we have mineralogy, 
That will be taught in 10 lessons, crystallography in six lessons, metamorphic geology, that will take us 11 lessons, environmental geology, which is also 11 lessons, giving us a total of 38 lessons in that model. In the third model, external geodynamic, we have paleontology, that will take us eight lessons, stratigraphy, 10 lessons, geologic maps, 11 lessons, that gives us a total of 29 lessons. The objectives of this model is to reinvest the knowledge acquired in seeking solutions or explanation to life situation or events and phenomena in the learner's environment. We also have the exploitation of such mechanism through the identification of problems and seeking ways of solving them. The application of such knowledge to improve on human life in the field of geology, sciences, and technology in the society. The competence to be developed in this model are, we have identification of faults, faults, and joints in the environment, sensitization on the risks associated to these geologic structures, recognition of the geologic structures and economic importance of joints, faults, and folds. We have uh, an image on your screen. Observe that and let us together discover what is, what that image is talking about. When we look at it, we see stratified layers that are bended. And below, we also have the stratified layers that are bended. Here, the layers have been separated. So, what is that? What does that tell us? That takes us to the lesson of, our, of the day, which we will together discover. Structural geology. Structural geology. Structural geology is divided into six lessons. The lessons are, we have the concept of stress and strain, rocks response to stress and strain, definition and description of faults, definition and description of faults, definition and description of joints, economic importance of geologic structures. In lesson one, we shall examine the concept of stress and strain. The plan of this lesson shall be outcomes, previous knowledge, problem situation, activities, summary, exercise, and assignment. At the end of the lesson, you shall know the definition and description of stress, the definition and description of strain. For us to attain these objectives and competencies, you are expected to have a good mastery of stratification in rocks, mountain building, and seismology. An engineering company construct a dam on a site to generate electricity. At the end of construction of that dam, no water reservoir was created. What is the problem in the situation? At the end of the construction of the dam, no water reservoir was created. Hence, no electricity could be generated from the project. What is the problem? Is the site having highly jointed rocks 
The site is having folded rocks. The dam is poorly constructed. Those are some of the possible response, responses that we can have to that particular problem. Now, let us observe what we have on our screen. And together, we shall deduce what we see. You should take note. Take note of the bending of the layers. Take note of the bending of the layers. This will guide you in describing the structure or the photograph on your screen. Now, what is that all about? Structural geology is the branch that deals with the geometry, distribution, and formation of structures created during rock deformation. I take it all over again. Structural geology is the branch that deals with the geometry, distribution, and formation of rocks created during deformation. In structural geology, we shall be talking about faults, faults, and other deformation structures in the lithosphere. How they appear, how and why they were emplaced. So in structural geology, we shall be analyzing faults, which are some of the deformed structures, faults, and other deformation structures in the lithosphere. How they appear, how and why they were in place. Before we start talking about deformation structures, we are at least supposed to know what deformation is. So we say that deformation is the change in the volume and or shape of a rock as a result of an applied stress. Deformation is the change in the volume and or shape of a rock as a result of an applied stress. We have that on our screen. We, we see objects. On the first objects, on the first object, we have stress that is applied on it. And if we look here, we see that that object has actually changed in shape. Below, we have another object, and there is applied stress on it, and the result is that there is also a change in the shape of that structure of the object. That is a simple diagram to illustrate what deformation is all about. Now, we just talked about stress. We need to know what stress is. Stress is the force acting on a body of rock. Stress is the force acting on a body of rock. The stress can be, it can be uniform, in which case the stress that is coming from the directions and acting on that body of rock are equal in all the directions. This is the first uh, illustration that is actually exemplifying that. We have stress from above, the stress from this direction, and stress from this direction. They are all acting on this body of rock, and we see that the intensity of stress that are acting on that rock are all the same. So we call that uniform or confined stress. And in the second diagram, we have differential stress. Above, we have stress coming from that direction. The rock or the body is also stressed from this direction. Uh, the maximum stress that that body of rock is subjected is coming from this direction. So, to conclude, we see that that body is subjected to stress from different directions that are not 
equal. So the stress from the different directions are not equal. We call that type of stress differential stress. Now, the principal categories of stress can be tensile, tensile stress, which is the type of stress that is pulling the rock away from each other. So you have a body which can be described like it is at the center of a, lo a location and uh, there are force or forces that are pulling that body away from each other. The forces that are causing that body to be pulled away from each other is what we describe as tensile stress. For compressive stress, the body of rock is actually subjected to forces that are acting on it. They are acting on the body of rock. So we say that the force moves the rock towards each other. So the stress from the directions are acting, acting on the body of rock. We say that that is compressive stress. We also have shear stress, which is the type of stress where rocks slide past each other. So you have a body and the stress that is exerted on that body of rock is actually causing it to slide past one another. We call that shear stress. Now, we also have strain. When the body is stressed, it responds to deformation, which is what we call strain. And that strain is any change in shape with or without a change in the volume of the rock. Any change in shape with or without the volume of the rock. So, when rocks are stressed, they respond, they respond to it by deformation. And that deformation is what we call strain. Now, depending on the type of Depending on the type of stress, the deformation differs. For example, we have a body of rock. It is represented with a square. If you look at it, we see that on that body of rock, the stress that is acting on it are equal from every direction. The stress acting on that body of rock are equal from every direction. And when a rock is subjected to that type of stress, what happens? You have the outcome or what happens to it. You see that that body of rock is reduced in size or in volume. It is reduced in size or volume. So. In isostatic pressure, where the rock is stressed the same from every direction, we have a reduction in the volume or the size of that body of rock. A reduction in the volume or the size of that body of rock. In our next illustration, we have compressive stress. In compressive stress, you see that the stress is acting on that body of rock from or both directions. It is coming from left and from right. This is the two directions in which the body is being stressed from. And when that happens, what you find that that rock will also change it changes in size or in volume and shape and this is the outcome you have a cube that attains the shape of what a rectangle as a result of that compressive stress so that is the effect of compressive uh, stress it causes that rock to change in the shape what type of shape that is what we have on the board. For example, a cube now attains the shape of a rectangle. That is the effect of stress 
on the volume and shape of rocks that are subjected to what? Compressive stress. We move on to the next type. The next type of stress, which is tensile. Tensile. In tensile stress, we see that the body of rock is subjected to stress, but the stress is rather pulling apart, pulling away that body of rock. That is it. So, in effect, when that rock is pulled apart, it will also change in the volume and the shape. Here we also have a cube. We have a cube, and at the end, this is what the rock will look like after being subjected to what? Tensile stress. So, that is the effect of stress on the volume and shape of a rock that is subjected to what? Tensile stress. We move on to the next type. We have shear stress. Remember we said that in shear stress, the body of rock moves slight past one another. In a horizontal manner, they slide past one another. So when that happens to a rock, what is the effect? You have it moving side by side towards each other. That will be the effect on the, on the volume and shape of a rock that is subjected to what? Shear stress. So when rocks are subjected to stress, the effect is that they change in volume and shape. Now, depending on the type of stress and the nature of rock, we are going to acquire different types of shapes and also what? Deformation. Now, at the beginning, we said an engineering company construct a dam on a site to generate electricity. At the end of construction of the dam, of course, no water reservoir was created. The goal of that dam was to create a reservoir, a water reservoir. But unfortunately, at the end, no water reservoir was created. What is the problem in that situation? That is, electricity could not be generated since the dam did not accumulate water. These are the proposed options. The first, the site is having highly jointed rocks. The site is having highly jointed rocks. We say yes to that. Reason being that the rocks of that area has been subjected to what? Brittle deformation. Brittle deformation. When that happens, you see that joints or fractures are created. And when these deformation structures are created, water, they will now act as what? Passageway for water that was to accumulate in the reservoir. So because of those joints, which act as passageway for water and other fluids, the water that was supposed to accumulate in the reservoir actually moved through those joints, thereby leaving the uh, dam uh, without water. The site, the next uh, response to that is, the site is having folded rocks. We said no to that. It might be true that the site is having folded rocks, but that will not have an impact on generating or creating a reservoir. The dam is poorly constructed. That, that option also is not correct. So those are the responses, the answers to our, uh, uh, the, our problem. So in essence, we are saying that for the, the engineering company was supposed to invite a structural geologist to actually study the jointing system of the rocks of that area so that a problem like that would have been what? Uh, avoid it. To summarize what we've seen today, say that structural geology is the branch in geology that studies structures in rocks. And these structures are fault, fault, joints or fractures, and other deformation structures. 
and all of these structures are found in the lithosphere. That's the lithosphere of the air, the earth. And now we've also said that deformation. Deformation is the change in the volume and or shape of rock as a result of an applied stress. Deformation is the change in the volume and or shape of a rock as a result, as a result sorry, of an applied stress. And the stress will be the force that is acting on the body of rock. And this stress can be tensile in which it is a type that is acting on, that is pulling the rock apart. We have compressive, which is acting on the body of rock, compressing it. We have shear stress, which is uh, causing the rock to slide past one another. And we've also said that strain is any change in shape with or without a change in the volume of the rock. Strain is any change in shape with or without a change in the volume of the rock. And we have seen diagrams illustrating the different type of strain that you find in rocks. That takes us to the, uh, the exercise of the day, which for exercise number one, we listen to the question. From the diagram above, when forces act towards each other on a body, they are described as, from the diagram above, when forces act towards each other, they are described as, is it tensional forces, frictional forces, compressional forces, or shear forces? The answer is compressional forces. So if that was your option, then you are correct. Exercise two. The type of stress which is equal in all direction is called, the type of stress that acts on a body which is equal in all direction is called, is it shear stress, uniform, tensional, or differential? The correct option is uniform stress. For the assignment of the day, you will list the geologic structures formed as a result of rock deformation. I take it all over again. You will list the geologic structures formed as a result of rock deformation. Our next lesson will be on rocks response to stress and strain. Rocks response to stress and strain. See you in the next class. Una tege si, ma tege yop. Una tege minga, ma tege nyom. Una tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia niña ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri, wa tege ndong. Esotina, bia jinkido. Mane tambia niña.